Hello everybody and welcome to Insane Just Plays Hearts of Iron Man 4. The good guys at Paradox were nice enough to provide me with a preview copy and I decided to make some videos about it. I've been playing this game uh, quite a bit and uh, yeah, I'm uh, going to make three Let's Plays videos of this. Um, the first of all one is going to be uh, as Italy, then there's going to be one as Poland and there's going to be one as Brazil. The Italy one will, that's this one you're watching right now, will be following the tutorial and gonna be a little bit slower and try to explain the game a bit more from my experience so far. Poland is going to be testing out the, the DLC that they have for Poland which gets their own focus tree and uh, see if we can stand up against the German Reich. And as Brazil, we're gonna go a little bit off course and uh, just try to conquer as much of the Americas as we can. But as I said, this is going to be a tutorial one, so let's go back to the menu and do the tutorial. Welcome to the Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial. You will be taking charge of Italy during the period leading up to the war. Reading the tooltips will help you understand things as you play. So it is recommended that you make good use of them. We can select provinces. We can move units once they are selected by the right mouse click. Like this. And zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. And we can hold it to pan. That's easy. Uh, there's an integrated wiki. Ta-da! Uh, I believe it's online and offline as well. So if you're not connected to the internet, you will have an offline wiki available to you and uh, the wiki will be updated uh, a lot and it's really useful if you want to figure out something but we have objectives so let's start with that so there are icons over here and we're gonna follow them a little bit one of the things is we need technologies to be researched so let's start with research slot available this is the research screen you have a number of research slots that each can take uh, can each can research a technology. Click the empty research slot select to, to select something to research. Country of different amount of research slots with major powers usually having more. It is possible to unlock an additional slot through national focuses. National focuses will be covered in another alert and another hint. So we don't need to show this again because we have read this now. And this is the research tree. Although it might seem overwhelming at first, it's actually not too complicated, and I do agree. We have highlighted some technologies that are recommended to research in the beginning of the game. It is a good idea to research technologies that boost your country's industrial base as well as more general military improvements. As the game progress, it might be valid to research more specialized technologies such as doctrines or aircrafts. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve. Technologies take longer to research if you're trying to research something ahead of time. There are natural focuses that can reduce the ahead of time penalty for certain technologies. Alright, so they highlighted a couple of things. Uh, engineering, industry, land doctrine and infantry. And right now we're going to start with the following. We're going to get some extra research time by electronic mechanical engineering. Next up, we're going to get some production efficiency with machine tools. So construction speed and a doctrine. We have the grand battle plan uh, doctrine, which is focusing on extensive planning and preparation before engaging in battle is the key to success. We're gonna get the ground battle plan, which will give us a better planning bonus. So now we have completed our first objective, four out of four technologies researched. Next up, there are three civilian factories. This is the construction screen and it is used to improve your states and provinces by construction buildings. At the beginning of the game it is suggested that you build civilian factories for a couple of years before starting to build military factories or more specialized structures. By building civilian factories you will be able to construct more buildings in the long term. All three civilian factories will be constructing new buildings according to the order in the construction queue. Civilian factories have been highlighted for your convenience. Click it to activate build mode. When build mode is active, click on the map to queue the construction of a building. Hold shift click to queue the maximum amount. 
So they say build civilian factories, which is absolutely true. If you build civilian factories first, uh, you will have more production means to build more military factories later. I'm at the moment of the philosophy that I want more military factories immediately because I will always run a shortage of military equipment from the beginning of the game onwards. Plus, the military factories are quite faster to build and there are other ways you can get civilian factories as well, which is going through the focus system, but we'll get to that later. So let's start with some military factories and queue up a couple of them. Right, we have now some military factories being built. You can see here they're using 12 out of 15 civilian factories. We have 20 civilian factories, but not all of them are being used by us. We need some for consumer goods. People will need their toasters. And the rest of them are being used for construction. So we can see now that the next factory will be completed on the 23rd of February. Now we've completed another objective. 20 out of 20 civilian factories are in use. Now we need to use our military factories to actually build stuff. This is the production line screen. Production lines produce the equipment needed for your war effort. It is recommended that you produce both the equipment you need now and that you might need in the future. There are two types of production lines, military and naval. The first uses military factories, and the latter uses naval dockyards. The more factories you are assigned to production lines, the faster you will produce the equipment you need. A production line can be created by clicking one of the four highlighted buttons to the left. Once you select an equipment type from the, one of those four categories, a production line will be created for the equipment type. Read the next page of this hence to see recommendations on what to produce and how many factories to assign to each production line. So let's see. So the recommendations is the following. Uh, a large production line for infantry weapons, some support weapons, some artillery, uh, some fighters, these are fighters, at least I believe so. No, they're actually close air support. And some Mastral class. I would say cruisers. Eh, destroyers. But we're gonna do it by ourselves, so we're gonna not show this again. And we have military factories. We're gonna do in infantry equipment, and indeed we're gonna build a lot of it. Let's take a look at our divisions. Oh, recruit and deploy. Well, we're gonna skip it for now, and we come back to it later. This is the division designer and is used to create new or edit division templates. Editing or creating a division template will cost you army experience. You need more army experience before you can create or edit a division template. Alright. So this is our division template. This is what our basic divisions are being made of. We have some colonials, which are exactly the same, except that they have this over here, which means reserves. They will get uh, last. Uh, the equi equipment will, that they will get will be last in line. So all the other divisions will get it first before they get them. And they just require some uh, manpower and some infantry equipment. While our main division will require infantry equipment, manpower, and support equipment. We have some alpine uh, divisions as well, which require manpower. Infantry equipment, support equipment, and artillery, because they have a support artillery over here. And we have some uh, division Celere, which is kind of a mechanized division. That has a light tank, some cavalry, some motorized. So it requires manpower, infantry equipment, motorized, and light tanks. So those are the things that our, uh, our units kind of use. And with that in mind, we can go for, uh, we don't need to show this again, thank you, for what we need to have. So we can also go to the logistics page. This is the logistics, logistics screen and its purpose is to help you see if you're producing equipment faster or slower than you are spending it. If you are producing more of a type of equipment than you think you need, it might be a good idea to reduce the amount of factories working on the production line that is producing the type of equipment. So right now, we are not in a shortage of any source of equipment, it looks like. That's a good thing. 
Um, we can see over here for the reinforcements, there are currently no requests. Uh, we get back to that later. So, let's show this again. Right now, we don't really need to purchase artillery uh, or build artillery. I'm not going to make any divisions that are going to use artillery in the beginning. Therefore, I think it's better to focus upon the things that we are going to use, at least in the beginning. So, artillery is not needed. Motorized wool is only being used by one template, and it's a template I will not build a lot either. So, we don't really need those either. And support equipment will only be used by a couple of uh, groups, but it's important enough for me that I want to produce it immediately. So I'm going to put three of those in as well. Then we also, of course, can build some tanks. Uh, but we've seen there's only a very limited amount of tanks being used at all, and I'm not going to produce them. And then we have, of course, planes, and they are quite interesting. Um, Plane warfare is important, but you can get by not paying too much attention to it. That being said, having planes is quite good. Um, but in the beginning, I'm kind of going to go for a go on it. I'm build more infantry equipment instead. And I can assign more factories than I currently have available. We only have 19 available. 15 plus 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. But the, you can assign more, and the moment uh, some more of it will be constructed, since we are constructing some, it will get automatically assigned to uh, your, your queue over here. Alright. With that being done, let's go to the next objective. Because we have finished the military factories, but we need our dockyard. So what am I going to build? I would agree with them with the destroyers. That seems nice. I'm just going to kill a maximum amount of them. And now we are running a deficit on oil. We have zero units of oil, but we need 11. And that will mean um, that we are producing less uh, of the destroyers than we can because we are having a shortage of oil. And I can remedy that. How can I remedy that? You can go to your trade screen. This is a trade screen and it allows you to trade your civilian factories for resources. The insufficient resource alert will show whenever you have one of your production lines does not have the required resources. That's this alert. Production lines will continue to produce equipment but at a reduced speed. Trade is a valid option to solve that problem. Do note that when you trade away your civilian factories for full resources they cannot be used to construct buildings, which is quite important because we want to finish our military factories as soon as possible. So even though we are running insufficient resources at the moment, I will not use my factories to trade for that because I think the ships are less important at the moment. We can also select where the ships will be uh, brought to. These are all uh, naval groups and these are naval bases. You can see our navy, and there are in many places uh, available. But right now, I'm going to leave it on automatic, and that will assign them by uh, the game will assign them themselves. So far, we're doing really good on our objectives. We just need to set a national focus, and a division is queued for deployment. Let's start with the national focus. This is a national focus screen. And it allows your country to select its political goals, which will result in effects or bonuses that helps the game progress. We have all highlighted a couple of national focuses for your convenience that we recommend you start with. The reason this path is recommended is because it allows you to gain another research slot as quickly as possible, which will allow you to research one more technology simultaneously. And uh, if you didn't see, these four were highlighted. And I do agree, an extra research slot is really good. We get to five research slots, which is the maximum in the game. Other options at the moment are light ship effort, which will focus on our Navy, Mare Nostrum, which will focus on uh, Navy doctrine and give us free dockyards. Well, this is more research bonus for uh, better ships. Army supremacy, which gives some, some military factories, some army experience and some land doctrine modifiers. 
And this is the Ethiopian War Logistics, which will lead to an extra research slot. And I will go with this first. It will provide us with naval bases and infrastructure in, uh, in our Ethiopian theater. So let's start with that. And we have followed another piece of the objectives. The last one will be Recruit and Deploy. This is the Recruit and Deploy screen, and this is where you queue new divisions for training and later on deployment. We recommend that you add Divisione di Fanterari. Fanteraria. That's a really difficult for me to pronounce for some reason. To the queue. Divisions and training will first attempt to gather the equipment they require. Once they have the equipment, they will begin their training. Training progress can never exceed equipment progress. Click the train button to add the division for training. Once the divisions have completed the training, they can be deployed to a location of your choice. You may only deploy divisions in your core territory. And we have finished our first part of the tutorial. Good, now that alerts are sorted out, you can start diving into the details of waging war. Italy started war with Ethiopia, and you should not have much difficulty in winning that war once you learn how to do it. Move your cam camera in the southeast direction until you find Eritrea in Africa. Once your camera uh, location has changed, select the divisions in the Eritrea state. But first we're gonna focus a little bit on our division. We need to set a location and I'm gonna set a location uh, right here. This is nice um, in Milan. It's a nice place to go. And right now we are, rec we are recruiting one division. Um, these lights here are quite important. These are the reinforcement priority. We are building our equipment up over here, but where does that equipment go to? Well, uh, nope, this one, yeah. For, right now, all the priorities are equal, so he kind of divides it evenly. But well, we don't need to upgrade so much right now, so we're going to put it on a low priority. And I want to focus upon getting more manpower out on the streets, and therefore I want to focus on high priority for our divisions. Because remember what the tutorial said, they will only be, be able to train as much as they have equipment. Zero equipment means maximum of zero training. By putting more equipment in there, they can train further up. Also we're going to add units over here. I'm going to start with about 10 at a time. And this will allow us to, even if the equipment bar is full, we can go to other uh, units so they can all train at the same time. This number is the amount of number that you will be training. So right now, once a guy is done, he will be deployed in uh, Milan and we'll start a new line. But if you say, I just want to have like 50 divisions, 10 times five is 50 and he will stop off there. Right now I'm gonna keep it with infinite. All right, let's go follow the tutorial and look for Eritrea. Well, I know it's right over here because this big arrow told me it is. So, let's select the divisions over here. There are 14 divisions in Eritrea. Let's select them all by box selecting. Great! Now you will learn how to start planning an offensive. Divisions can join together in armies, and army is used to draw battle plans and they can be assigned a commander to lead them. Click the new army button at the bottom of the screen. Good! Creating an army was the first step. An army can be given orders by drawing battle plans. Click the front line button and click the border to Ethiopia. This is the front line and we want to create a border right over here. Now we have a front line and it means units will muster around this line in an evenly spread manner to defend it and advance from it. Good, a front line now exists between towards Ethiopia. In order for you to get your troops to attack with battle plans, you must first also draw an offensive order. Click the offensive line button and right click and drag between two highlighted provinces. This is our offensive line. We're gonna drag a line like this. You now have created an offensive order to protect the Ethiopian capital. Before you go ahead and give the order to execute the plan, it may be wise to make the correct preparations. If you allow your units to prepare for 25 days, they will receive a combat bonus for up to 
Certain land doctrines can modify for how long you can prepare, while others might modify how fast you can reach the maximum level of preparation. It's also advisable that you prepare your air force as well. Click the airbase in the Eritrea. Good! In order for your troops to have a guarantee of high success in battle, it's also important to give them proper air support they may require. Air wings assigned to an air region can be sent on missions. Su missions. Support air wings can be sent on close air support missions, which will enable them to join land combat engagement. Assign the air wings based in the Eritrea base by right-clicking the East African air region, and then giving them orders once they are assigned. Good! You now have your air wings assigned to the East Africa air region. Before you start doing anything, however, you must first give your air wings missions. If an air wing does not have an active mission, it will stay in the air base. There are a number of different air missions, and the air missions and, uh, and the air missions an air wing can be sent on depends on the type of air wing. Support air wings can be sent on close support missions, which enables them to join land combat engagements and attack your enemies. To send an air wing on a mission, click the mission icon on the air interface. So, fighters are really good at air superiority and interception. Air superiority means they will fight other fighters and to make sure that only your fighters will be around the sky. Well, interception is focusing not necessarily on the enemy fighters but on the enemy bombers and try to minimize the damage that they are doing. We're gonna go for air superiority with the fighters. And you can see now 40 fighters are assigned to the East African Theater. Now we have the tactical bombers who can do port strikes which will damage ports and will limit their ability to send supplies from those ports to other places. And strategic bombing, buildings, infrastructure, industry uh, will be destroyed. And uh, yeah, people, you will have to rebuild it before you will be able to use it. And close air support, which will give us extra damage towards uh, fighting enemy units. And then we have the close air support, which has the same port strike, but also naval strike. If there are any navies around, then it will actually attack them in the open seas. While port strike is focused on ships on port as well, naval strike is for the open seas. And of course, close air support again. Good! Now with almost everything set up, it's time to look at executing the battle plan and conquer Ethiopia for Italy. Click the default map mode button in the right, bottom right and then select your army by clicking your portrait at the bottom of the screen. Let's go over here and select the army. Good! Before we begin the assault in Ethiopia, you should assign a commander to your army, if you have not already done it. Click the empty portrait leader to the top left of the screen and select a commander from the list. Click the execute plan at the bottom of the screen to order your troops to begin the evasion. So we need to assign a commander. And we have a couple of guys. So there are two types of commanders. We have generals and you have field marshals. And some of them have a number, uh, they, all of them have a number, some of them is higher than the other. And some of them have some medals. The medals are bonuses that they give to your units. Like this guy gets max entrenchment for better defense, and he's from the old guard. He will gain less experience, but your units will gain more entrenchment. There is difference in uh, the bonuses that generals and field marshals will be able to get. Generals will be able to command maximum of 24 divisions, while field marshals have an unlimited amount of units they can support. And their skill level Will, show, uh, will give you an extra attack and defense bonus. Level 1 gives plus 5 for attack and defense, while a plus 4 gives plus 20. You can also promote a general to a field marshal, but he will lose all his medals and he will lose all his skill. So be careful when you promote a unit. Uh, right now, we will use the best general that we have. It is a pencil leader. We don't have really all the divisions in there, but he still will provide us with a 20% bonus or to attack and defense. So let's click him. You will also be able to gain new medals based upon the things that you're fighting. For example, there are quite some mount areas over here, which will mean he will gain experience in fighting in the mountains and will make progress to gaining the mountains fighter skill. But first, let's continue with the tutorial and execute the battle plan.
Your forces will now begin an offensive on Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital. When you have occupied enough of your enemy's territory, they will surrender. And pause the game by pressing space. You can adjust the game speed by plus or minus keys. It's normal that players often adjust the game speed according to the needs they're supposed to play on the same speed all the time. If you feel you could control your units better, select the division of right-click provinces to manually override the orders to get units get from battle plans. So, before we actually on pause, I want to make an army group of these guys as well. Make a group. And make them go towards Addis Ababa as well. Like that. Because we have some units here, they might as well fight, right? And let's select a general. We don't have really good ones, so let's just use the old guard. Mm, it's not really good. That's the most brilliant. Well, not the most brilliant officer. He's unlikely to cause trouble. But let's get someone who actually will be able to gain more experience out of it. And you can also see, like, uh, the estimated plan value is 60%. The plan is considered to be to our advantage. The enemy is inferior, and but the visions are still preparing. I don't know how 100 minus 20 equals 60, but that's paradox math for you. You have some green line over here, which will show your, your forces compared to the enemy. And when it's halfway, it means your forces are equal. And the further to the right the green goes, the stronger your forces are. I'm going to activate this battle plan as well. But we're going to leave it here for this episode. Next episode we will finally unpause the game and start our conquest of Ethiopia. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.